This includes the deployment of chatbots as a critical source of reliable information on COVID-19. The fact you have decided to show up and dedicate this time to us chatbots means a lot. Besides COVID, what else could we help you with in the future? What would you like us to improve? I think from our perspective, you know, we, we believe in a world where every person's got access to quality healthcare and chatbots and specifically chat systems um, are a huge step in the right direction. As part of what we, we did over the last years working with incredible teams at the World Health Organization with WhatsApp is to try and make information universally available, which means we can make this accessible in over 20 languages, um, but we can also do this at scale. Um, and when we say scale, um, we literally mean every person on the planet and at speed. There's over 2 billion users today in WhatsApp that rely on our platform to speak to people that matter most to them. What we saw during the pandemic is that our platform became a crucial way of just how people, organizations and governments have responded to the pandemics. And I think the main point here is that WhatsApp allows us to reach people where they are. The biggest surprise in a way shouldn't be a surprise at all. The, the surprise is that no matter how well we think something, something is going to work before we launch it, we're, it always seems like we're wildly off, that it's nobody uses it or we can barely keep up with the demand. These chatbots or, or any of this new communication technology, for us, is an extension of our main digital presence, our website, and, and it's ways to reach targeted individual audiences. I think one of the, or maybe two of the advantages we had um, going into this pandemic is that we have existing experience uh, in chatbots. They exist in multiple languages, multiple platforms, all of the ones that have already been mentioned. And, you know, that really helped us to understand that it is not only about the right technology, the right time, um, but about establishing and building a trusted relationship. Being aware of the results, uh, of the positive results of botting during the pandemic, it would have accelerated the development of this technology to be more connected before the COVID. But in terms of, of the, the contents, in general, it, it worked very well. We should have done before that. When we think about fake news, obviously behavior and you know what sort of drives human behavior is really sort of at the core of this. There are really three key individual level factors that have been identified in the literature. The, the first one is analytic thinking. The second one relates to confirmation bias and what we call motivated reasoning. So in a nutshell, we're more likely to accept information that is consistent with what we already hold to be true. And we have a really strong motivation to reject stories that conflict with our own worldview. And then finally, there's a number of different personality traits that may be associated with belief in disinformation. I think the general idea was that with Go Viral and our other games as well that we've developed here at the Cambridge Decision Making Research Lab is that rather than telling people what to believe, we prioritize inviting them into an engaging and non-judgmental environment where they sort of learn by doing. So in other words, once you understand the magic trick, you're unlikely to fall for it again. We are reaching approximately 300 million citizens, and that is across Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Because life-saving information has to get to everybody without exception. It was extremely important that we reach absolutely everybody, not only people with smartphones or internet connections, but people, regardless of whether they're urban or rural, which handset they have or, with, or, or whether they have internet or not.